wanted to show you all of the things that I ended up dyeing in that dye pot on the last episode. This was the shawl that I put in first, the one that I wanted to do for Kaya for eco printing. Um, and I used, I think it was six ounces of matter root to a six ounce shawl because I wanted a nice deep color. It turned out a beautiful, almost like burgundy wine color, but there was still so much color left in the dye pot. So I threw in two more. This is a silk and this is wool and I got slightly lighter colors. But there still looked like there was a lot of color in the dye pot. So I threw in another silk <clears throat> and a smaller wool. And you can see the difference in all five of the colors. This one's almost like a like a, a peachy brown. There was still a lot of color in there, so I threw in some yarn. And I got First these kind of uh, rusty reds, and then, so this is uh, Blue Face Lester wool, this is Merino wool, and I got a slightly lighter pink, and then I got these. You can just maybe make out the difference. This one's slightly more yellow. These are all BFL also. So a lot of yarn. Then I decided, okay, it still looks like there's color in there, so I'm going to throw in some iron. So I threw some iron in. This one was not mordanted. These two were mordanted with tannins. And this is what we got. All kinds of purple and pink. So check this out. From that one dye bath, we got all of this. That was from six ounces of dried matter root that I collected from my garden. It's amazing the amount of color that comes out. And it still looks like there's some color in there. So I'm going to take it and uh, try to make a lake out of it so I can have a powdered extract and see if I can use it for, um, for paint.
Hey friends, I just wanted to show you this cutie patootie before I got too far. This is Mary Molly. She's a little mole. There's a little mouth. Her little pink nose. And I just put in her eyes. I'm starting on her shoulders. So this is one of the sweet little toys that I wanted to give to Kaya when she goes off to college. I just thought after she's had a hard day, maybe she's had to do a test, or she's had a lot of classes, or whatever, she's missing home. When she crawls into bed at night, she could snuggle up with this cutie. So I'm working on her, and I wanted to show you the the yarn. Um, sorry, the color's not great, simply because it's dark outside, but this is yarn that I dyed with matter root, that same matter root that I dyed her shawl with uh, that I talked about in the last podcast um, and I really wanted a plum colored yarn and I didn't have one so I put this in with some tannins and some iron and shifted it to be more of a brown purple which I think is perfect so Mary's color uh, Mary Molly's color is very much I think kind of like a real mole so I'll show you this in the daylight soon, but I'm going to keep working on it, and uh, and I'll show you the progress. I finished the sweet little mole. I did stuff her tail before um, finishing it because you can't get to it once you're once you finish the tail. But the rest of her, I'm going to stuff after a bath. I thought it might be nice to. Um, just make sure all of the stitches are um, evened out with a little bath. She has little fingers and little toes. <laughs> She's so cute. I can't wait to get some clothes on her. Well, Molly is done. Mary, Mary Molly? <laughs> no, I don't know what her official name is or what I'll call her. She's blocked and dried and now I'm going to stuff her. I think I mentioned that I'd stuffed the tail already because you had to close it off before you were done with it, but I don't think I mentioned what I stuffed it with. Um, I went into Kaya's room while she was reading in there and I brushed one of her favorite cats, Maxine, and then I stuffed the tail with Maxine's fur. Um, so the yarn that I've used has been gathered and naturally dyed by me. The tail is stuffed with Maxine's fur. And the rest of the stuffing is from a fleece that I had. And um, it was from a meat sheep that may have been a Dorper cross. And the man who I was buying the fleece from for spinning had these also and just gave them to me because he didn't know what to do with them. So they've been beautifully prepared, but as you can see, they're maybe two inches, more like an inch and a half. It'd be extremely hard to spin that. I could add it to something, but they almost look like little neps, is that what they're called? Like just kind of balls of fur. So I thought I could at least use some of this to stuff it with. Then everything that goes into making her little mole other than her eyeballs will be from from me or from our yard or from something I've been a part of so I'm gonna get her stuffed and then I can't wait to make her some clothing I'm gonna make her clothes very similar to the clothing that is in the pattern and then I'm also gonna make her more of like a gothic Victorian outfit because that's what Kaya likes to wear I think that's it. I've <clears throat> given her a nice little stuffed face, a little smile, 
Her arms are a little more movable. And a little bit of a mole waist. <laughs> and some chunky mole thighs and a nice big mole booty. She's ready for her clothing. Okay, I thought I was done, but I decided I'm gonna put some lavender inside the little mole. This is lavender from um, our gardens from last year. And this still smells really good. So I made a little indention in there. I'm just gonna stuff a bunch of lavender in. That way it's in the center and doesn't poke out of the knitting but it will still smell nice when she squeezes it. And then I'll just close it back up with a little bit of, um, a little bit more of the stuffing. And then it's time to sew her, sew her closed. There, now she's got a belly full of lavender. chickens have been laying like crazy. They were born in May, so um, they're in their prime egg laying years right now. And because we have a small heat lamp, it's just a red heat lamp, for the cold nights it may continue to stimulate their laying a little bit through the winter, whereas often chickens will decrease their laying during the winter hours. So we have a lot of eggs, and this isn't even anywhere near. We usually have We've been getting about nine eggs a day, so sometimes we have five to seven dozen eggs on the counter if a few days have gone by and we've not been eating a whole lot. We've been making quiches. I made um, a seven egg pasta. I'll put the recipe link for that below because it turned out really nice and that used a lot of eggs. I've been making pickled eggs. Um, this one is uh, just like a standard egg pickling recipe but I simmered the water and vinegar with butterfly pea flowers so it turned them blue and they really are very blue. Um, and then this one, they look a little brown. This one's a tamari or soy sauce recipe that's really nice and I'll, I'll link both of these below. The other thing I've done, and it's my first time doing this, is I'm making salt cured egg yolks. I wasn't really sure I'd be interested in those until I heard that they're a really good Parmesan cheese substitute and I don't do well with dairy so I was very excited to find something that might be a similar taste and texture to Parmesan cheese. So I put them in the salt a week ago and they've been sitting in the fridge and I'm going to take them out today and finish off their dehydrating in the oven. So I wanted to show you that process. Okay, this is exciting. So, I'm going to dig these out of here and then put them on this tray that has parchment paper and put them in the oven for about 30 to 45 minutes at 175 degrees. That'll just help finish drying them off. And I'm also going to put all the salt, the curing salt, in this pan and dry it out again and then I can reuse it for curing in the future. that I found called for washing the egg yolks off um, or wiping them with a wet rag and some just went straight into the dehydrator or oven. These are still just the slightest bit damp on the outside so I'm just going to wipe some of the extra salt off and um, leave them as is because I don't imagine that I will mind a little bit of extra salt in whatever recipes I'm using these in. I've also seen some recipes call for putting them in the dehydrator, um, 
versus putting them in the oven. Um, that'll take a little longer, so for me, I'm just gonna go ahead and put them in the oven. Um, and that way I can get them done and maybe have some with dinner tonight. See what the guy, these guys look like. kids up yet for school but um, it actually feels really nice outside I just went for a long walk and I wanted to show you my new sweater uh, this is the Maria's jumper that I designed uh, you've seen it in the past couple of episodes but in yellow and after I finished it I really wanted to make another one in a larger weight yarn so this is the the Iridale DK weight yarn uh, and I wanted to do the design a little bit differently. I've written all the details up in the, on my Ravelry page and on my blog where I put the whole pattern of how I did it, the measure yourself and figure out all the calculations. But the two big things that I did differently is that I did not put the cable up the arm. I just did the little embellishment at the wrist. And I like that better, I think, because it doesn't remind me of the Adidas tracksuits. And I added more um, ease. So this has about, I guess, nine, nine to 10 inches of positive ease in it. So I can wear bigger things underneath. It's a heavier weight yarn, so it's a lot warmer. And that way, if it's super cold or it's a snowy day, I can put more underneath and uh, stay extra warm. The cool thing about this, I don't know, I feel like wool is, well, really breathable, but also kind of self-regulating. Like, I can be outside in super cold weather and it stays, it keeps me nice and warm. Uh, I went out early yesterday morning to get groceries and it was cold. My husband had like five layers on and I had a t-shirt and this sweater and I was fine. But I wear it in the house too where it's about 70 degrees. It's a nice comfortable temperature and it doesn't make me too hot. So I really love it. <laughs> I love wool, period, I guess is what I'm saying. But this sweater is really awesome. The Erdale yarn, oh, they'd set up some kits for the first pattern that I made and they did it again for the second one which was super sweet if you like the color if you like the pattern if you want to knit it yourself they have everything set up for you on their website and I'll link that below in case you're interested but um, yeah I think it turned out really well I'm very happy with it I love the embellishment on the bottom at the waist as well as how the cables start in your ribbing and go up the arm Oh, uh, the second big thing that I changed was because I had so many extra stitches in the body, it's a bottom-up sweater. I had so many extra stitches in the body, by the time I needed to get to my decreases for the neck, if I did the two-by-two two decreases, sorry, not two-by-two, two, if I did two decreases on, on each side of the raglan, right, so, <laughs> let me start over. It's a raglan uh, top style top. So generally you do a decrease on one side, on the body side, and then another one on the arm side, and that makes this pattern. If I were to do it like that, I wouldn't have had enough decreases to bring in the neckline, and it would have gone up like this and kind of not sat very close to my neck. It would have sat on my shoulders and been really open. It's, it's already still somewhat open up here, but what I decided to do instead is I did a uh, 
on the body side of the decreases, I either knit three together or slip, 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 knit, depending on which side I was on. And then on the arm side, I only did two. So I brought this in at the standard rate, and then I brought the, the, in the body side in more dramatically so that it would come in uh, towards my neck more. And I think it worked out well. So there it is. I hope you guys are having an amazing January and that your February looks very bright and beautiful, and I will see you guys soon. Bye.